Hello, everybody. Andrew Blake from the digitalaudiomanual.com. And this is another episode of Cubase Tips for the week of June 6, 2025. Let's start off today's discussion talking about the media bay and the media rack and some of the interesting ways you can browse files. Media bay in Cubase, you go up to the media menu and come down to an option that says media bay, shortcut key F5 if you haven't changed it. There is so much stuff to look at and browse in the media bay, many options for how you choose your folders. But closing out of this, go over in the right zone of the project window. There's a tab up here that says media. This is also the media bay, but it's kind of a different design and it's actually referred to as the media rack. Typically you might hit something like this loops and samples tile, and then you can see all your different packages that you've installed. You can click on the different tiles and browse through things. The thing I want to call your attention to, it's a very interesting option in general. If you click this little home button, which takes you back to the beginning of all these different tiles, there's a little three line icon up here that says show all results. And immediately that kind of looks at every file you have in your media rack. And there's all kinds of options here. Lots of things to be confused about. But I want to draw your attention from here to an option that says select the media types. And this is a drop down list. When you click on this, you're going to see various categories of your media types. You could hit this one that says all media types, hit enter everything that's in your media rack and all the different kinds of media types currently they're just listed from a to z with all different kinds of icons you could just spend a long time browsing through all the files that you have on your computer this way whether the things you've put in here or the samples and things that cubase has given you but a very interesting option in this area is to go back to this all media types and instead of choosing all the media types pick one of these categories for example take this option that says midi files Check on that, I hit enter. I now have this list, the very specific icon of these different files. If I click on any particular file, in this case it starts playing a piano sound using Halion. If I move from there and go over to my tracks, in my particular project, I have all kinds of tracks that I preset up here. One of my tracks is a Groove Agent SC track. You can hit the instrument, open that up. I already have a kit loaded in. If I come back down to this drop down list that originally said work piano from Halion, and instead I go down to the category that says plugins, this actually shows all the different tracks that I have in my project. And if I move up towards the top, there's an option that says Groove Agent SE. And there's one that says main as a subcategory and one that says pattern. I'm going to choose this Groove Agent SE main. And now when I hit any of these MIDI patterns, they're actually auditioned through this Groove Agent track. And I can begin going through all these different patterns that are here and listen for something that I may be interested in as a drum pattern. This one's called 29 Minutes to Jupiter and it shows a bridge, a chorus. I can move on down the Aberdeen selection and then I can audition those patterns by clicking on them. In essence, this is giving you the whole Groove Agent library in one long list. You can audition through whatever kit you've already set up in your Groove Agent. So it's a great option when you want to quickly explore many different patterns that are available to you. And also when you don't want to just be cumbered by the fact that if you open up Groove Agent in general, you only have a few patterns to work with and you would have to load or browse other instruments or styles to try to get these different patterns. Your media rack gives you a quick access to all the different patterns at one time in one long list. This may be just what you need to find the pattern you're looking for. Because you have all these patterns, let's say you put a little song together. You want to audition some of these drums with your song. If you hit something that you like, you can simply just drag it right onto the track. Then your pattern will play right with your song. Then I can pick out patterns from completely different kits that I can audition. Drag those into my song. Once you bring a MIDI pattern into your project, typically you could just make copies of it if you needed to. In this case, I could hit Control D and I have these two copies. There's another option Cubase gives us. It's called a shared copy. There's a few ways to make those, but one way is when you grab this middle dot, stretch it out to make another copy. If you read the dialog, it says a repeat count. But if I push down my shift key before I let go of it, that dialog changes to shared repeat count one. And then if I let go of it, this now creates what's called a shared copy. If I look at this MIDI part and this MIDI part, these two little lines in the upper right corner, 
So telling us that this is now a shared MIDI copy. What happens with shared copies, anything you do to one of the MIDI parts happens to the other one as well. For example, if I went up to the MIDI menu and I came down and said, open it in the drum editor, I could change this MIDI part, change these drum hits, and whatever I did here would happen to the other one as well. And now for the major tip of the day, I have gotten so many people asking me, is there any way to play groove agent patterns through the new drum machine? And I've also seen, as I've perused other people's advice, that everybody else pretty much says the same thing, that currently you just can't play groove agent patterns through the new drum machine, that they're basically two separate worlds. Well, I'm here to tell you there is a way. Once again, in my particular project, I've created a drum machine. If I open it up down here, I have all these different drum parts. I think it's the Atomic preset, actually. Once again, if I go over to my media bay, I come down to this bottom list of things and go to this plug-in option and scroll through my list. Right here, I can see the Atomic Age main, which means this is going to be my drum machine track right here. So if I click on this, and now I select one of these MIDI drum patterns, guess what? I am now listening to this through the new drum machine. Let me open it back up in the lower zone. And all the things that are available in the drum machine can now be altered or changed any way I want to. I can even go up and change the presets to something completely different. So now I have all of my drum machine patterns, all my Groove Agent Kit MIDI patterns, that I can now play through whatever I want. If I like one of these MIDI patterns, I can drag it onto my new drum machine track, changing them however I want, adding them wherever I want, basically creating whatever kind of drum pattern I want. I can select all of these patterns, control duplicate them as much as I need. And now I can build my song with Groove Agent patterns playing through my drum machine. Maybe I don't want to hear that crash, so I can just go to that particular pad, mute that one out. Maybe this hi-hat's a little bit too loud. I can bring the level of that down. Just like that, I can build up all kinds of patterns. If I wanted, I could still actually keep my Groove Agent patterns in here as well. Let me drag one of those back in, in this area. Then I'll mute out my drum machine. Then I can combine them like that. So there's a world of things to explore in your Media Bay rack, looking at your various categories, not just the MIDI files like we looked at today, but your track presets, MIDI loops, various audio files. Take some time and look at all the stuff in your media rack, and more than likely you'll find something that'll give you just the spark you need to get started into something else in creating your next project or song or whatever you're into. Have some fun with those ideas, and then I'll see you next time. All right, it's going to wrap it up for today. As always, if you haven't already, click the link in the description of this video to learn how you can get access to the all-new Digital Audio Manual Preferred. It's the clear, step-by-step -step solution showing you not only the tips, but all the secret and typically never talked about features that'll take you to a higher level of using your software. If you've been searching for an all-in-one solution to take you from start to finish and learning Cubase, and WaveLab, and other music software, this is exactly what you've been looking for. So click on the link in the description and come and be part of the clear path to a better learning experience. So today we had a look at the media bay and the media rack, learned how to browse for different kinds of media files. We specifically got into MIDI files and saw how we can use those with Groove Agent. And then we also learned how we can use them with a the new drum machine and interchange those different patterns, making use of the full library without having to load different kits. But at the same time, we could change presets and get completely different sounds with whatever patterns that we set up. And we will continue to explore all these different features and functions, the various tools that we have available to us. As always, it's great to have you guys here, and I'll see you on the next video.